today's episode, you're gonna learn two things. The power increase you can expect from a drive-in, drive-out tune, and two, the difference that a large diameter tire, so my muddies, makes to the power output, people don't actually realize the big difference it can make. The nav is on, on its factory tire, so it kind of looks like it's missed leg day today, but very good reason for that. So I'll get this in there now, whack it on the dyno. Um, first, I'm gonna show you guys another sneaky little mod that you can do to your full drive. Uh, I'll see you soon. She's just checking out the new shed, you know, making sure everything's in order and Dad's working hard. And, Seems to be. Yeah, she's, she's more of a boss than a child, if you ask me. She loves being over my shoulder. Don't, don't know why. She has to be over my shoulder and she's happy. As soon as I put it down here, yeah, starts cracking it. Not happy, she starts eating her arm and <laughs> you're like Dad, you just lose the plot. Today, we have the nav in the shed, as you can see. That's because the boys from Throttle Grenade have sent me their newest addition to the website, the Anytime Locker Switch. You can get it for Navara or Hilux. Basically, gonna show you how to put that in today. Are we gonna need this? No. Huh? Do okay. I need the Viper? No, you don't need a welder for this install. If you're wondering, wasn't that one of the first mods that I did to the nav? And yes, it was. But the boys just always supported the channel from the very start. So I thought, why not support them back and do this little install video to show you their latest product. Alrighty, so this switch is pretty cool. All the wiring's concealed in braided nylon. Comes with a really cool switch. Um, it's got like a lightning bolt on it, so there's not gonna be any mistake what you're pressing. Just like, why would you even bother with this switch? The main reason is because Toyota and Nissan don't let you have use of the rear locker unless you're in low range. Actually, is very handy. If you're on the beach and you've got this, I highly recommend you just go full drive rear locker on. And you will not get stuck. I mean, especially if you've got your tyres down. That's probably the main reason. But the main thing is the fact that your locker only works in full load. Yeah, I just said that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I completely back his theory. Because going into full low is a pain in the ass. If you're in full high, you can throw the locker on. There you go. Jamie, what are you doing up there, mate? I'm checking out the mess. That's it. Oh, <laughs> so let's get stuck into it, eh? First, open your door. Then you get Mac to do the rest. <laughs> it's, it's, it's easy, I can do it, come on. It's actually a pretty simple thing to install, guys. Start with, pop your bonnet and disconnect your battery. But if you have the automatic, whack it in neutral before you do that. If you've got a manual, I don't think it'll matter too much. So if you've got the automatic, slide the collar down, pull the pin off the front of the stick, lift the shift knob upward. Very important not to lose the pin. Now for pick or a small flathead screwdriver, the piece of console that surrounds the shifting knob, leave it underneath and it'll pop straight up. It's clips all around. The piece of dash in front of it that has the full drive knob and the spare slots for the switches, whack your hand under, pull down and forward, and it will come off quite easily. It's all just clips, so the first time you do it, it is quite sturdy. Mine's been off a few times, so it's getting easier. Head around to the glove box, drop down, squeeze the back, and then unhook it, comes off pretty easy. You'll look to the right hand side, you'll see a little gap on the right hand side, in the little gap there's a little plug. Pull that out and that's the plug that you put into your throttle grenade harness. It will only fit in one of the holes and then the other side of the harness goes into the spot you just pulled the plug out of. So now it should be starting to make sense, there's only one more plug on that harness and it goes to the back of the switch they supply you with. The piece of dash that you pull down and forward and the whole thing can come out of the car and, and you can work a bit, I do that, so it's pretty easy to do. You'll notice with mine, I actually have the front locker switch, which is another thing, throttle grenade switch, and my standard rear locker switch. I have just left that in because I didn't have anything to plug the hole. You can actually just remove the stock rear locker switch and replace it with theirs. Leave it all plugged in, but just hide it behind when you put everything back together. But totally up to you guys. If you want to do it how I've done it, then just do that as well. Whack it all back together in reverse order. Don't think I need to show you exactly how to do that. Reconnect your battery and then check everything works. First thing you're gonna to to check is to turn your accessories on and then push the button. It should light up with the little lightning bolt. If the switch is working, you'll notice your dash will show the, the diff lock light on the dash as well as the ABS and traction control lights. This is normal. It's a very simple install as well for the Hilux. If you want one of these bad boys, you can use Groom TJ on the website and you get your 10% off. It still applies to the throttle controllers as well. That's how these guys 
have always supported the channel. So thanks Rudder and Grenade. Yeah, and it's a nice little discount for you guys too. So keep that in mind. This comes out very soon, if not already. Alrighty, you guys might be able to tell I've got the factory tires on. Kind of looks like we've skipped leg day today because of them. <laughs> Rummy through it. Shane, how are we doing this? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're strapping it down. So I'm going to give you a power figure and talk figure where you are stock yep. on your stock tires. Yep. Uh, then we're going to do a bit of a tune, have a bit of a play. Uh, keep in mind, you've still got your DPF in play. Yep. Uh, we can get a little bit more around because you've got the snorkel and airbox. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll see where you're at, and then we'll rip her off. We'll throw your tyres on, rip it back on, and show a comparison before and after. <laughs> totally forgot to wash the engine bay. Make sure you pop your bonnet if you've been anywhere gnarly. Am I right in saying that you can have a completely factory vehicle drive in, drive out of here with more power than you drove in with? Yeah, 100%. You don't need to have all the mods in the world to make power. Uh, you can have standard airbox, standard non snorkel, standard exhaust system power. Obviously, that power amount changes, so the more mods you have for way of power in versus power out. Yeah. Um, so, oh, sorry, air in versus air out, but we can get you more power with it. Uh, but on average, somewhere between that 15 to 30 percent mark, depending on what you've got and what's your car. Yep. And then obviously, your fuel consumption as well. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so all I've got basically is the snorkel and airbox, so that, that's going to give me what, a little tiny little bit? A little bit. Not recommending you bring a, a factory vehicle in and you're going to get amazing results. You, it would make more sense to what, get an inner cooler, exhaust, yeah, 100%. So air intake, all that. The money you're investing in putting a tune in, you might as well spend a little bit extra and put the mods in the suit. For sure. So today's episode is just sort of to show you what's possible, really. Maybe in the near future, I will actually go and get inner cooler, exhaust, all that stuff. But for now, I'm just keeping it like this because I thought it'd be a cool, pretty cool little video just to. I don't know, run you through how it's possible. Now, only a seasoned professional understands how to feel his way to this. I can stick my hand in and feel for the best. Yeah. <laughs> what are you chasing in there? Uh, so this is boost reference. There's a, there's a map sensor up under the throttle body oh, in here. Yeah. We're going to run it on the dyno factory to see what a stock this and Navara make. We'll throw a tune in it, see what we get, what kind of increase in power we get. And then at the very end, I'll throw on the bigger tyres and show you the difference. Having a bigger diameter bit tire on the vehicle actually makes like it sucks power out of it. Yeah, so it's your factory, yep. uh, completely stock, stock tires, stock exhaust, other than obviously your intake stuff. So we'll run it up, we'll do a couple of runs and see where you're at. Alright, we'll get you happy meeting. We'll get the average of it. Results for the factory tune, so a stock Navara basically gets 113 kilowatts, 328 newton meters. And am I correct in saying that's at the tyres? At the wheels. On the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. 20 pounds of boost yeah, so from factory. Boost. Stock. 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 Peekaboo. <laughs> well, oh, you guys, I forgot to mention, check out the slider up there. I'll run you to that now, and when we come back, see what kind of power we get in this bad boy, eh? With a new tune. <laughs> What do you think of Max Time Bags? Unreal. Down at Fat Bars because we finished up Jamin's bar work and they're going to get a powder coated here and finish them off. So, let's go. What do you reckon, though? We doing Mac right? Daddy's Dime Bags. Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Yeah. Couple of little berries here. Haven't chipped off, but we'll get to them. <laughs> Can't be perfect. Actually going to get my sliders re-measured up too. I think we're going to do a new set of fat bar sliders because mine have just gone to crap, eh? Like the finish on them. I was going to get them re-powder coated, but I think it's best just to go new ones. Blake's got them on his highlights. I really like them. They, they, they work well and they look great. And to be honest, I was at being at shows and that, people think the whole car is rusty. Hopefully this brings the finish of the car back to looking kind of nice again. <laughs> Everyone thinks my whole chassis is like that. It's just the slider. The rest of the car is fine, so anyway. Get a new set of sliders on and uh, it's gonna look badass. Alrighty, we're back. So this is the exciting one. This is the tune, it's in, it's loaded. I'm gonna run it on the dyno. We're going for 800 kilowatts. <laughs> hey, come on, at least it's house. We're going for 20, 30%, I reckon. So I'll be excited with 20, 20 30 percent. Whack the fan on. Whack the fan on. You can see the intake temperature is uh, currently at 40 degrees. The fan's going to cool your inner cooler down currently, so that's why it's dropping a little bit. So you whack, yeah, we've got the fan out front, but what Shane's saying is if I had an inner cooler, am I correct, that 
that number is going to be lower. Correct. Close, bigger, bigger interval. It'll be closer to like the actual air temperature yeah. heading. So the idea now is to get an average, but you can see the intake air temps already at 50 degrees, which means it should be less power this time. But that dip in power is where the, what is it? The heat, the intake air temperature is too high, so you lose your power. If you had an intercooler, uh, you're gonna get more power straight away but to be honest I'm never going to be going over 130k an hour so for me it should be fine. Alrighty guys there you go that is the increase you can expect if you bring a dead factory Nissan Navara here <laughs> and uh, it's going to be noticeable because it's torque it's up that torque basically the power you need in a four-wheel drive in my opinion is the torque it's going to make it a lot more drivable especially when I got my canopy on that's the main reason I'm doing this because like going up hills on a highway no good at the moment or well, it wasn't now it should be fine let's test out what power it gets with my uh, muddies on. How much power it loses. What do you guys reckon? We've got less kilowatt. So it went from 138 kilowatts to 102. We've got heat soak issues as well. It's hot here today, like 30 degrees in here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the what's the plan? How do you do it? Just drive. Fourth gear, the 460, accelerate, go a bit further. Now accelerate up to 60 without leaving more. That's it, accelerate. Oh, come on! Ah, flat the ball. Touch. Well, can't say I've ever done that before. That's pretty cool. New experience, mate. Yeah, yeah. So that shows a difference of like 110, 20, 28 kilowatt. Yeah. Just by increasing the tire tire size by that much. Yeah. Like. Figures have changed a little bit more. So with the yeah, yeah. 50 degrees air intake, 30 degrees of room room temp. So we let it cool down the Sarvo probably a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, but close enough to you, you lose a lot of power. Yeah, no, I'm happy with that. That should make it because the torque, actually that's another thing we didn't show, the torque. We're getting 360 Newton metres. We're getting 360 Newton metres with the big tyres. That's going to be the noticeable difference when all the weight's on. And like we said before, you probably wouldn't bother doing what I've done. You'd probably get an intercooler and an exhaust yeah. just to get the air through. Yeah. This was just to show you guys what's possible and um, yeah, it does make a difference. But still stock-wise, it's still power to make. Yeah, factory yeah. vehicle can get yeah. more. Drive in, drive out power. That's it. <laughs> How cool. Alrighty, I'm pretty happy with that guys. If you found this episode interesting, check out the one where we fixed Max Ford Ranger. It um, actually had a turbo blow. So we ended up changing the turbo, bringing it here and putting a good tune in it. If you found this one interesting, you might find that one interesting. <laughs>